coming up next, we coming up next, we've got our nothing second bat of the evening. We've got Damon Teal taking on Charles O'Brien. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape. We've got Damon Teal. He's 19 years of age, five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, with an amateur record of two wins and one loss. He's fighting Charles O'Brien, 26 years of age, five feet six inches tall, 175 pounds, with an amateur record of five wins and one loss. Really? Waiting for our first fighter for this bout to come to the cage. I'd hate to say which one it was, but it is the blue corner. Got Charles O'Brien. His shirt says it all. I do alpha male shit. 26 years of age, seven years the elder of Damon Teal. He's got an amateur record of what I have listed as zero, one, and zero. Apparently, it's five and one. Uh, kind of tough with the way the records are written on the internet, and uh, you know, need a little more clarification. But by any means, his last fight was a loss via first round Kamora versus Sean McSherry. Sure, they're uh, putting the grease on his face and he's getting ready to go. Go ahead and explain to us the importance of that grease, Mike. Well, the reason you got to grease your face is because of um, the proliferation of cuts in a combat sport like mixed martial arts. You don't want the uh, leather on the gloves to rip open holes in people's faces as easily as it would without that. So a little bit of Vaseline goes a long way. Now from the right corner, we need David Thiel. David Thiel, inside inspection area. David Thiel, right Here we go, folks. We got Damon Thiel coming out from the red corner. He is a Gladiators of the Cage vet. I've seen him and, and announced him fighting a couple of times now. Damon Thiel, young gun, 19 years of age. I think this will be the third time we've uh, commentated on a Damon Teal fight. I really think so, and it's, uh, you know I like him. I've talked to him, he's a super nice guy. Uh, he's a good guy to be around. Whenever he comes down to cage fighting, you know there's a lot of guys that are gonna come in here and fight, but having a guy that's really easy to work with and nice to talk to really makes all the difference as far as the promoters go and the way that the fight plays itself out. I think at 19, he's uh, you know putting together a nice little record here. Shows a lot of poise in the ring. At this level, it's much more about having a good showing, and it's about getting experience and learning how to be comfortable and what works for you and what doesn't when you're under the pressure of a real fight in a cage. Absolutely. You know, like I always say, uh, half the guys that get in the cage lose, and that's just the math of it. Uh, unless we're talking about a draw or no contest. But we'll just throw that. Strike legally, and if you do throw a strike, it doesn't matter whether it lands. We have the ref give us some in, in, uh, little instructions to Damon Teal. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Dan Bogan, for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our second event of the evening. Before we get started, I want to apologize to Grant Berger, our senior member of the commentating team of the... I've left him out the first time. I'm on a roll tonight. Anyway, this is in the Gladiators of the Cage Amateur Welterweight Division calling for three two-minute rounds. First, we'd like to welcome Fighting. Out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 169 pounds. He stands five feet, five inches tall, 26 years of age. He's 0-1. He fights for Team Vicious MMA. All the way from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, it's Mick O'Brien. And his opponent weighed in at 172 pounds. He weighs five feet, seven inches. He's 19 years of age. He's got an amateur record of two and one. He fights for Colleen Martinberg's legendary Evolution Fight Club in Butler, Pennsylvania. He's from Butler. Let's hear it for Damon, 
the freak of nature, Teal, your referee, Bill Bookwater. Dave, you touch him up? You to touch him up? All right, touch now if you want. When the bell rings, you're live. All right, good guy. Here you go, man. Right to this corner, please. Dave, step one, step over. All right, fight, are you ready? Fight, are you ready? Fight! Here we go. Round one is underway between Damon Teal and Mick O'Brien. I gotta say, one of the things I noticed right off the bat, both of these guys are a little bit shorter than what you'd average, uh, regularly see at 170 pounds. Both five feet six inches tall. They are. Nice but takedown by O'Brien. That means he's got a lot of power. He's a very strong, stout guy at 170. That was a big slam by O'Brien. You're right. That was a huge takedown. Right into the guard of Teal. Let's see if he can do anything with it. And no, he, no ground and pound of the head at this level. Ah, oh, Teal almost had the sweep. Teal trying to work an active guard, it looks like, but he's keeping it open. An open guard is good to open up your possibilities. Often an open guard can get the fighter on top to try to make a, try to make a move that you're able to react to. It's reactionary jujitsu. Teal looking to open up an angle here for either a sweep or an arm bar. He's moving pretty well underneath. Absolutely. And like we said earlier, it's really difficult to pass the guard with these shin pads on. And it's really difficult to play your game with the guard as well. Uh, both fighters are kind of kind of dealing Seymour with that struggle right top. now, it Let's seems. Go. Oh, and from this angle, I can see uh, O'Brien's shin pad is actually ripped open. Wow. It is. Wow, is he oh, going to go Brian for a straight sat, ankle lock? Brian's sitting back into a straight ankle lock. This straight is an Achilles up. lock here. Folks, beautiful Teal escape. Twists out. Important of note that at this level of amateur, this is second tier amateur MMA, the twisting ankle locks are not legal, only straight leg locks. So that would be an Achilles lock, which is a uh, lock on the Achilles tendon of the foot or a knee bar. Nick O'Brien's shin, shin guard is essentially non existent at this point. It just fell out. It is lying over by the side of the cage there. And wow. Big guillotine finish from Daniel Teal. So the shin pad becomes irrelevant. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I was about to say, you should start throwing some leg kicks, but Damon uh, Teal really went to work right there. Just a little bit of a careless takedown on the end of Mick O'Brien, and, and that happens very often. That's one of the most common things you'll see with the guillotine choke is that, you know, the, somebody will shoot in for a double takedown or maybe try to pass into a no, would, top position and just leave their head a little bit too deep in the armpit of the, the fighter they're going against. Daniel Teal, I think wearing uh, Goku-inspired Dragon Ball Z shorts. The, the fact that you know that means we are not going to be having, having lunch uh, or having dinner after this whole thing's over. Big win by Damon Teal, though. Wow, that's really impressive. He's going to move on um, to be 3-1-0 at this point. I think his power level is over 9,000. <laughs> I got to say, another good thing for Damon Teal, as far as experience goes, he now has a win via TKO decision, and he's got a submission under his belt. Very poised there. So let's take a look at the instant replay if we got a chance. Yeah, that, oh yeah, 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 that was tight. Here we see Teal cinching up that guillotine yeah. choke with a half butterfly guard, and he pulls it on the full guard, and he's already got him tapping. I think he was just deep and he was in just the right place. Absolutely, and a submission like a guillotine, it cuts the air, air supply off. That can happen so fast that you, there's no time to react. Sometimes you just gotta tap. At this point, let's send it over to our ring announcer, Dan Bowden, for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 50 seconds of the first round, your winner by guillotine choke, fighting out of the red corner, Damon, let's get you in here. Congratulations, great fight here tonight. Was that part of your strategy? First round, you guys actually, I heard, called for each other and you both wanted to fight each other. You've upped your record now to three and one MMA. Big question of the night for you. Was you planning on it going to the ground because it's come out strong wrestling? Uh, not at all. I thought we were gonna stand up and have fun, but he, one, the first time you took me to the ground, I expected it the second time, so I was ready for it that time. You slipped in a great guillotine choke, had it in deep, stuck with it, ended up getting the tap. Are you looking forward to your next fight here in Gladiators of the Cage? 
Uh, it won't be for a while because I'm going to finish school. I'm going to take a year off to finish school, and then I'll be back. Sounds great. Anyone you'd like to thank tonight? Uh, I want to thank uh, Evolution, Big Mama, uh, Colleen, and then I want to thank my friends and family for supporting me, and that's it. Great job. Let's hear it for the freak of nature. Great victory tonight, Damon Teal. All right, there we have it. Damon Teal moving on to an amateur record of three wins, one loss. He's got a win of each type under his belt. Very impressive. Coming up next, we've got Lucas Keeler taking on Mark Sistock. But now, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> 